Hi everyone! In this video, we will talk about an extremely powerful but often overlooked feature in TypeScript. We will talk about the synthetic this argument. Let's get started. So before we start to write some code ourselves, let me first show you how TypeScript uses the this feature in its own type system. So let's say we have a list here and we say we have a string in there, hello, and we also have a boolean in there and we also have a nested array in there with one, two, three. Now, when we check what the type of this is, we can see here that this is an array which contains strings, booleans, or an array of numbers. Now, when we want to flatten our array, we can use flat on it. And as you can see, see now we have a resulting type of string number or boolean array. Now let's see what the type definition of flat actually is. Let's open flat here and we can see how it is defined. And maybe you have already spotted it. There is something interesting in the type definition of this function because the first argument in this flat function is this. And we can see that the this argument here is not optional. But when we go back into our main TS file, we can see that I did not pass in this argument into the flat function. And that is because the this argument in here is just a synthetic argument only for the TypeScript compiler to be able to determine the proper type on which this flat function was called. The this keyword in non-arrow functions always refers to the caller. So for example, in this case, this here refers to the array on which the flat function gets called on. And this concept in JavaScript is really important to understand, but for this video, it's just important that you know that we basically store the type of the this, so where this flat function was called on in this generic type A. Because as you can see here, we have this A generic type and we tell TypeScript to store the type of the this where flat was called on in this generic type to use it further in its type definitions. Because as you can see here in flat array as a first argument, the this type, which was stored in A, is also also provided to do the proper typing because only by telling TypeScript to store the this type in A, we are able to have proper typings for our list here when we call flat on it because otherwise we would not get proper typings from our nested array after we called flat on it. So this is maybe a little bit theoretical. So let me show you a real life example how we can use this feature. So first let's remove this here and we will create a class. So let's create one and let's call this class house. So we will make this house really simple. It has two rooms. We have room one and this is a bathroom and we have room two and this is a bedroom. We will also add an address and we will say this is John Street. Now we want to add a member function in this house because we want to be able to call a function to remove occupied rooms. So how do we do this? Well, we create the remove room function. So what do we want to pass to this remove room function? We want to be able to pass all possible rooms to this function to remove them from our house. So how can we achieve this? We'll make this remove room generic and we will say we have a key here and this key extends key of this because what we do in here is we tell TypeScript that we want to have this key here store the union of all possible keys of our house. So in this case, it's room one, room two or address and even remove room will be a key of our house class. Now, because we only want to be able to pass rooms, we will use extract here and we'll say key of this. And as a second argument, we will add a template literal and say we want everything which starts with room and ends with any kind of string to be in the union for this key. So by using this approach here, we are only extracting all the keys from this, which fit this pattern where it starts with room and ends with any kind of string. And now let's just create the argument here. So we have our key and we say this is of type key. So what will remove room return? It will return everything beside the key we removed. So we will use the omit utility type and we say we want everything from this but the key. So now we have the proper typings. Let's now create a simple implementation. And by the way, this is a really cool way to remove certain properties from an existing object and create a new one with the remaining. So we can create a new variable here and we use the destructuring here. And we will have the key here as the key and the value is like drop, it doesn't matter. And we then use the spread operator to store everything remaining. So everything beside the key in this rest variable. And then we say we want to get it from this. Now we just say return rest here and our implementation is done. So as you can see here, TypeScript is not really satisfied how we do things and it's telling us, well, there's something wrong with your return. 
And as always, TypeScript is right. Let me show you what our issue is with the current typing of our remove room function. So let's create a new house here and we say this is a new house. Now let's create a result one here and let's call house.remove room. And as we can see here, we are only allowed to pass in room one or room two because we have used this extract utility type. Now let's pass in room one. Now let's see what we can access on result one. So we call result one here and as expected, we can call address remove room or room two. So everything looks correct, right? But let's see what happens when we call remove room again and let's call room two. Let's store this in result two and let's again check what we can access on result two. So we call result two and we see we can access room one again. But this is strange, right? Because here on house, we called remove room one and we called here remove room with room two. So we should not have room one or room two available on our result two here. And here is exactly why we need this synthetic this argument. And I know this is maybe a little bit hard to wrap our head around, but let's think what the issue is that we here still have access to room one again. Because here in this remove room function, we are explicitly accessing this. And this for this remove room function is always bound to house. It does not understand on what kind of type it was called on. And this is why we need this synthetic this argument. So let's fix this issue. The first thing, of course, is as we have seen in our flat function as a first argument, we add this in there. Now, of course, we need a typing. How was it done in the flat function? We just add here another generic type and let's call this this type. And now we are telling TypeScript store the type on which the remove room function was called in this generic type. So we store it in this type. And now we can replace our this keyword everywhere with the this type we have defined here with a generic one. So in here, instead of having key of this, we use key of this type. And instead of omit this, we are now using this type. And maybe you have already spotted what also went away now. We can see the return here is no longer throwing an error because TypeScript can now properly type the this variable we have here. So let's now see if this is working as expected. So on result two, we just see what we have available and and we can see room one and room two are gone because what we are doing here is at first we create this new house. So the this type here is just containing room one and room two. But then we call house remove room and we return the new this. So the updated this which no longer contains room one. So we store the result here in our result one and we can see this is of type omit house room one. And then we use this new type and call remove room on it. And we can see here on result two, we have omit on omit house. And on this, we omit room two. So we are updating the current this type by using this synthetic this argument. So me personally, I really like this feature because it makes it really easy to keep our this type in sync with our real code. And it's also great, for example, for builder patterns where we want to have like a builder class and we want to remove or add new elements and we want to keep our this type in sync with our real JavaScript code. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date for the newest TypeScript stuff. And also let me know in the comments what kind of topics you'd like to have covered in future videos. See you in the next one. Bye.